Hi guys, Nesty here. Welcome back to another video. Today we have a new patch, like a really big one. And yeah, it's time to really start raging a bit here because in my opinion the community is fooled really hard this time. Like as you probably know already, we got, where is it, is it here, the Draca Rebirth Festival, where you basically have to put in three net fives to get one of those Drakars. So far, so good. Let's take a look at all these Drakars. Stats really, really high. That's what I expect of a monster where you have to throw 12 net fives into it to get an Evo 3. Skills 100% uh, chance, 15% SP when attacking. That's basically a book light succubus skill. Really great. Puncture ignores 100% of the enemy's defense, only applies to the active skill. Where else should it apply when you are using the active? So that combined with the useful leader skill, of course, normally you shouldn't throw variants into it. But for example, if some of you are lucky and get the right variant gleam or whatever, really a great skill. So let's say for now, fire is really, really strong. Like these skills are meta changing, but we will come back to fire later. Let's just take a look at all of them before. Then we have the water one. Double weakening. Chances are not that great. I expected more, especially from a monster with the costs of the Draca. 80% for two turns. That's okay. That's not bad. 60% chance for three turns. I think this one is really bad. 60% chance for a net 5, where you have to throw in net 5s. I think the weaken in general is a strong skill. It's multiplicative with skills like attack down and defense down, which in the end results in, I think, if you have the attack down on it, which would be 50% attack decreased, you also have the weaken on it, the weaken means 40% uh, attack down and 40% defense down. It's not that you get it 90%, but if I see it correctly, you get it like the attack down is calculated first. So it's basically 40% of the remaining 50% of the attack of the Titan or whatever. So we can basically say it's a 20% decrease. For defense down it's a bit less. For whatever reason. But it's nice to have this defense down in case you are missing your normal defense down. But the real value lies in the attack down here. So let's say this is a decent monster even if I wouldn't use him. The water element in general is packed with really strong monsters. Lots of Courage Strikers, lots of decent healers. The Courage Striker especially are great because they have always one second skill that is really strong, in that case the Indra and the Barona. So if you're in the end game, you need these debuffers less and less. For example, if you are getting like, let's say, two water Indra. You can already think about completely not going for an attack downer, but just use the water indras. Same as with defense down. If you are lucky or you're already playing a long time, wailing or whatever, and have three baronas, you can completely ignore the defense downers as well, in my opinion. So there is only space for healers. Healers not a full debuffer and we have the healer here with the bastard the recovery is really low so in my opinion 
opinion only usable on the right side where you are stacking your attackers like that in combination with the cura would at least let you get a bit more heal off because there are two healers sometimes both i get a heal at least the chance that one of them is getting heal is really great while on the left side you often are playing only with one healer if you are using the Coutine Ribbonus healer there, you can just switch out the Coutine as well for the Bastard. With that you have the increased recovery from the Ribbonus, so that's fine as well. And I don't know which of these three, some of them have the same healing skill or the mechanic of the Venuses. Like the moment they are getting the orb, they directly heal, which is great as well. So they are in some cases better than the Coutines and they have the weakening skill. So in my opinion for endgame players that are looking to optimize their Titan lineups, I see the Bastard as the one that is using the weakened skill against the Titan. While double weakening is not needed here, even if he has really great stats as well, if you see the attack, it's really high. Like you can use it as another attacker, for example. You're going, I don't know, HP, attack, attack, or whatever. I think then you can use him. But is he worth all these monsters? I'm not too sure. At least he's not a bad choice. The wood one. <coughs> you can already see here that the eff effective HP is just crazy. Over 50k HP on 2800 base defense. So it's 50,000 and 2800. I think this is easily the highest effective HP in the game. And it's a double aggression monster plus an HP lead. So on the first look, the fire drug or uh, Draker is really great but he has one problem and that is that there's sadly net force exists that in my opinion are better with the name dark miho the super dark miho deals far more damage yes the miho don't have that much hp than the draker but in a lot of cases, it's about having the sustainability while also having a decent output of damage. And that's exactly what the Super Miho is doing. She can tank a lot while also having a really big damage. And I think this is what Draka is lacking a bit. The damage output is by far not that high than the Dark Miho. And at that point, you probably will see that the defense, at least in high arena, will start using annoying actors. In a lot of cases, these actors are used in combination with the pugilist set. Some even have multiple pugilist sets. Then the first defense down hits, the attack down hits, the seal hits, and whatever. And suddenly, you are seeing... Hmm, some more damage would have really helped me here. And this is not what I can see in the Wood Draker. Deals more damage obviously against monsters like Water Purse, Water Arthur. These are normally the two monsters that you see more in the higher arena. But I think it's not good enough. If that would be a dark monster, it would be by far the strongest monster for arena in the game but the wood element is lacking a bit obviously because of the missing crit damage and the miho obviously has the super active which is dealing some more damage as well so i think the draker is strong but it's not the strongest hp aggression let's say it's a small bit below the dark miho at least in my opinion because the miho is doing much more damage but at least the wood one is usable. If you really want to spend that many net fives for 
an HP aggression monster where a net 4 is stronger. That's up to you. I will not do it. The light one. Now, in my opinion, we are coming to the really sad part. Stat-wise, really great. High attack, high HP, acceptable defense. Not the highest defense, but the HP pull at least is really high. And then we see this. I really have no idea why they put these skills together. A weakening, which is a great skill, but it's not as strong as many other skills in Arena. Like, I would put defense down over it, I would put shock over it, I would put stun over it, at least on the offense. So there are a lot of skills, even some more, like a speed generation, just a lot of skills. And the skill is not really supporting the high offensive stats, while it's not fastening the dragon or anything, and then has an elemental ed edge. That's nice, but what about the first skill? They don't match each other, in my opinion. That's the biggest problem. Yeah. Would say usable, but far from one of those top monsters. Then we have a dark one. As you can see, skill, uh, the stats are really high as well. 29,000 HP. 3100 attack and over 3100 defense. So you can really see the balance stats here. It's really, really high. And again, the same shit. Weaken, which in my opinion is more of a Titan debuff. Yes, you can use it as well because it has the defense down for Arena, but it's like a 40% defense down against a 70% defense down, or even the shock that reduces the HP at uh, the defense by, I think it was 50%. So even the shock is reducing the defense even more than the weakening, while it also renders that monster unable to move. So these skills are by far stronger. And then the seal. 80% two turn seal. If I would take a look, there is probably some normal net 4 or so that has the same skill. So, again, in my opinion, most of the skills are really randomly rolled again. Dark completely don't fit, light don't fit, no titan monster. Like, why is the water one getting weakened again, while the bastard already got the weaken? Why fire and wood is not getting a weaken? I have no idea. And then we are coming to the biggest cheat so far. The fire one. In my opinion, as we were taking a look at the skills, the fire one is the best. It looks for me like a complete meta changer. Over 4000 attack. Has a moral boost with 15%. Just imagine if you're using, like that was my idea. Using three of the fire drakers and a leader, like let's say a light succubus. For me, that would mean I'm getting 60% SP for my whole team, which obviously is really, really OP in the arena because it means that you can make sure <coughs> that if you're not too unlucky, one of your drakers at least is full after the first turn. So the opponent has no chance to have the bar full before you. Another point is, I think the passive is hitting like, I don't know, seven times or so, like a really, really high number. That means he's also generating a lot of orbs with the passive. Another point which supports the first turn active. So basically the whole set looks like it's extremely strong, ignores 100% of the enemy's defense, then this idiotic information only applies to the active skill, and then if you're actually going for the rebirth, you will understand why it chose only applies to the active skill, which in the end is not true, it's another fool. We were doing some tests with it, in that case 
Hello Haku, thank you for taking one for the team. The whole skill, the description is completely wrong. It's not ignoring 100% of the enemy's defense. It's giving you a buff. So it's not if you're using the attack that it directly ignores the enemy's defense. It's giving himself a buff which in the next turn you will ignore the enemy's base defense which is a completely different skill why are you unable to write that in the skill description that it's a buff like that it's completely showing like it's a passive skill it ignores 100 percent of the enemy's defense why are you unable to write the skill description like has a whatever has a 100 chance to get a buff that will let you ignore the enemy's base defense instead of writing ignores 100 of the enemy's defense this skill is completely misleading and i know that a lot of people are going for the fire dragon so everyone that is basically going for it is completely getting cheated because he's by far weaker than you might think like that it means he's not boosting himself like if you want to be fast you want to boost yourself because it makes no sense to go for more than one of them he don't has that the first active will not give you anything it's like an active without any skill just after that the skill applies so you're wasting another turn and then it's only ignoring the base defense like every monster that has defensive gems, which a lot of monsters have, laugh about this dragon. He has no HP, defense is good, but in the end he has no HP. So he will get completely destroyed in the active AoEs from all these defensive monsters, while he's unable to deal damage. That means in the first turn he can grant SP to the team, which is really great. But what comes after that? First, we all thought, yeah, that's only the beginning. After that comes the puncture, and then I'm completely rolling over the defense of my opponent. No, it's not like that. You will do like nothing more than as if the monster has the full defense. It's a very small defense, especially against monsters that have lots of defensive gems. You will feel a big or a decent increase in damage against HP based monsters, but how many of these HP based monsters actually have defensive gems as well? Every monster that is boosting normally has a defensive gem. What are maybe a light purse? In high arena, you will face a lot of light purses. The whole defensive setup of those monsters is still there. Defense aggression, like Probably some of you thought he will completely destroy all death aggression monsters. While it's the exact opposite, he has no chance against any defensive aggression monsters. Put in whatever, what do we have? There was the, was it not Artemis, but there was one, it was the Sunsung, right? Here, yeah. Sunsung. I'm pretty sure the Fire Draca has zero chance against the Fire Sunsung. She has. 3,700 3, defense with three defensive gems, that means easily over 11k. While the dragon is ignoring 3,700, which in the end is an increase of, I don't know, 10% or something like that. While we thought it's an increase of like 200, 300% because he's ignoring the whole defense. So the complete skill description is fooling it's not even close to what they are writing it's not ignoring 100 percent of the enemy's defense it's a buff that is giving you the next turn a 100 percent chance to ignore the enemy's base defense which is a huge difference so why are you unable to write that in the skill description i don't want to know how many people are going for this fire dragon make him evo 3 throw in like 12 net fives for it and then see fuck my fire dragon is completely useless 
So for me this is yeah, the April's September Fool. And it will be another reason why a lot of people are quitting this game. And honestly I'm feeling less and less interest in this game as well. It's already like farming, farming, farming. It's only farming for once a month Heroes Festival just to burst all your gems and get nothing again. And now when you think you get something, you even getting cheated. Like my idea was to go for three of them, just to have some a new toy, something that can change the arena meter, makes PvP a bit interesting for a short amount of time. No. You get this. And I'm really angry about this because it's fooling people. This is not the skill that you will get. As it is here, it looks like it's a passive skill that applies when you're using the active and it will ignore 100% of the enemy's defense. It's not saying it's giving you a buff that with obviously the next turn you will start to ignore the enemy's defense for two turns. It's a buff for two turns I think. So yeah, as you can see I'm really mad at that and yeah, I don't see the reason behind that, how people can be so idiotic and not be able to write the right skill description even inside the game and fool people with that to waste their net fires. Like that they only have the chance to go for one of the others, at least that's my opinion. I don't see the fire one as good. The problem here is that you need to use one active before you will get the puncture, which in the end hurts you while farming as well. So it's not really a decent farming monster as well. And let's be honest, if you have monsters like Monas, whatever, Secrets, any monster that is buffing the 3 star and has an enhanced damage of the 5 star skill is better. Or at least then you don't need to have such an expensive farmer that normally is doing worse than your other farmers that are cheaper. So the fire one is really not great, really far from great. While they promised us with that skill that it's a very very good monster. The water one in my opinion is good but I wouldn't throw in that many net fives for this. Because in the end you will need the bastard to use the weakened skill. Wood, it's a great monster, but again, a four star monster is better than not even this is not even a normal net five, it's a net five with three times the costs. Like it costs twelve net fives to bring it to Evo 3, not four like the normal net fives. Light, I don't see anything in light. Like, why not give him a shock or whatever? At least not the useless weaken. It's not a good skill for arena. If you want to use it against titans, then the elemental edge is useless. So light is, I don't see anything in light, and it's the same for dark. I don't see anything in dark as well. I don't know if you made, if you have made some and now you're seeing like oh I don't want to go for the fire one but I was lucky and get a light or dark one I can use that in the LD Titans okay that's fine but I don't know I would feel really cheated and I'm really lucky that I wasn't the one that was the first to go for the fire Draker because I would really be extremely mad about this if I'm going for an Evo 3 throw in 12 gleams and then I find out that I just got completely fooled by the description of the skill. Yeah. As you can see I'm actually really mad about this because this is in my opinion not the way how you are interacting with your players. Giving them foolish skill descriptions so that people are throwing away net fives and I can't see this as a mistake. They are able to write that the defense down is two turns, that an attack up is for some turns. Why are they unable to do that for the Fire Draker to say it's a buff for two turns 
that will let you ignore the defense, which would mean it's a completely different case. Then I can beforehand think if I want to go for the Drakas or not, which I won't do. I won't go for any of the Drakas, not with the skill set they have. It's too expensive in my opinion to get mediocre monsters, and that's another point. They are so extremely expensive. Why are the skill sets are so mediocre? Every one of them has a better monster. The water one has the best set, which fits a thousand times better into a water lineup. The wood one has, we can say, the dark meal with a four star. The fire one has like one million better farmers. Not even talking about PvP, like you will deal zero damage against those defensive monsters. You might be able to deal some damage against monsters that are HP aggression based or so. But the turn after that they are throwing some Actus at you and the Draker dies. <coughs> LD are completely useless in my opinion, I can't see them being used anywhere. So in the end none of them is that great. If you don't have a Mio, you can go for the Wood one, then he's really strong. I don't see any un anyone else being as close to the Dark Miho than the Wood Draker. Yeah, but that's it in general. So it's not that there are some power monsters. That's what I was hoping that they start to raise the damage, the skills, the stats, whatever, so that we are finally getting some new toys, not new monsters with a similar skill set, while we already have a monster that is doing something similar, so we don't need it. You have to throw three times more net fives into it than you normally need, so I would expect a power monster, which we doesn't got, but got fooled. So. All I can say is, think twice if you really want to go for the Drakas, especially if you were thinking to go for the Fire one. Don't do it. Don't go for the Fire one. That's at least my opinion, because he's much, much worse than what he's showing on the first impression with the 4k attack. The really great defense with the supposed great skills. Just be careful with that and yeah. What can we say, right? Another really, really annoying upgrade or update, whatever. So yeah, that's it for me. Be careful with the Drakers and see you soon guys. Ciao.